Hey everyone, it's Connor here. A quick update for you today. We're super excited to announce ETF chartable valuations. So today I'm going to unpack a little bit about what that means and how you can use that on the Coifin platform. So previously Coifin users were able to see the board and trailing valuation multiples for ETFs, like you can see in this watch list here. This can be PE, price to sales, price to growth profit, EV to EBIT, a bunch of different metrics there. And you can view them in a watch list like this on a, on a point in time basis. You could also head over to the screener and create a new ETF screen and you could filter by that criteria as well. So if I was looking for ETFs with a forward PE of under 25, for example, in the United States, I could cut down that output by roughly half just by adding that photo criteria. You could also use this in things like market scatter or the snapshots as well. But what we're excited to announce today is chartable ETF valuation data. So what that means in plain English is a time series of these data sets. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the SPY S&P 500 ETF here. I'm going to delete these data series and add forward PE, for example. This is something you previously couldn't do on Coifin. Now I can see that in a chartable use case. I'm going to go ahead to the settings here, make that thicker, change the color. And we can pull that down for a time period here. I'm going to change that to linear. Now we have the S&P's forward price to earnings, which is great. But just like you can with all the other data series on Coifin, you can also edit the data and the chart. So you can quickly flip this between trailing and forward basis if you want to. You can also transform the data to show performance or drawdowns from peak. But perhaps most as interestingly for this data set is you can add statistical bands. So here we have the mean. So if I throw it for 20 years, for example, I can see that right now the forward earnings for the S&P is about 19 times, but on a 20 year basis, it's about 16.4. And for 10, it's 18.4. For five, we're trading slightly under the, the mean, but then you've got all that influence from the pandemic. So probably less useful data there. You can also add things like standard deviations. So if I wanted to see one standard deviation from the mean, I can see that on the chart there. I can go in there and change the colors of these things as well. So it doesn't collide with the mean data. I can also add two standard deviations as well if I want, as well as adding the highs, the lows, and the medians as well. This is also useful if you want to compare the PE of multiple ETFs. Like here, I have the QQQ NASDAQ 100 ETF on a forward, ETF, on a forward earnings basis compared to the S&P. You can see how that relationship has changed over time. If, for example, you wanted to plug in the US sectoral ETFs on a forward earnings basis, you could input all of those tickers with the data series and see how that relationship has changed over time. So we've been showing you the forward earnings here on a chart, but you're not limited just to that one. Obviously, if you go into the data series picker and you head to financials, valuation, when you're on an ETF, you'll get a, a sense of all the different types of valuation multiples that you can use. You have dividend yields, debt payback yields, buybacks, shareholder yield, EV to EBITDA, the whole library there that you'd expect of any other Coifin data series, you can plug in there as well. Here's price to free cash flow, and you can add these into the same chart or separate them into separate panels, much like you would do with any other ticker. And you can also use this data to compare ETFs with individual stocks. So if we look at some of the biggest constituents of the NASDAQ 100, for example, I'm thinking Meta, Google, Apple, we can go ahead and put in those tickers here as well on a forward earnings basis, and we can see how they compare to the index. So we go ahead and pick Google here. Let's throw in the SPY there as well, because they're also a big constituent of that one. You can also change the data series of comparison as well. You can see here that I've changed all the data series to EV to EBIT. Despite the narrative that the Magnificent Seven are kind of parading their way through the returns cycle of 2023 in these indexes like QQQ and SPY, you can see that they both trade at a pretty big discount to the QQQ, which is about 22 times on a forward EBIT basis. Google and Meta, slightly more mature stocks trade at a big discount to that. NVIDIA, on the other hand, is up there about 27.6 times. So that does it for this short update. This is a feature set that users have been asking for for a while, so we're happy to deliver it to you. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the Coifin help desk. You can reach out to us on Twitter at Coifin Charts, or you can drop a comment in the comment section below, and we'll get back to you. Thank you.